Yeah, sorry, I, did, did, I was just having something to eat and watching the latest episode of One Punch Man. Oh, what, episode 10? 11. Oh, is there another one on today, is there? Did I? I think I downloaded it this morning. It's mm. good. Which one is it? Is it the one where it's on a spaceship? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, I've seen that one, yes, a couple of days ago, actually. What, you've seen the, you've seen Eleven? Um, I've seen the one on a spaceship where you've got, like, the giant tentacle man. Yep. Yeah, that's the one I just watched. Ah, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I do love it. It is such a good show. I hate you for getting me into it, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Noah's Arcade. Christmas episodes, uh, I intro all the time. You can intro this episode. <laughs> oh, no, I, I introed that one time. That was. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you've only introed the one time, you can. You can I've introed twice. Gosh, well, do it again. <laughs> well, let me know when you're ready. Uh, I'm ready now. Okay. Hello! Hello! Hello, welcome to episode. <laughs> I don't actually know. What episode are we on now? Like oh, We are episode 15. Episode 15 of Van der Hoff and Co. Yes. And, yeah, um, Stefan, you just do it. <laughs> oh, you, you're passing over already. <laughs> already, I'm not very good at the entrances. Okay. Um, yes, episode 15, Van der Hoff and Co. Uh, I am, once again, hi, Stefanition, Phil. Who are I am you? a monkey man, Phil. And, unfortunately, we haven't got Ant with us uh, again. He's a very busy man to... Uh, track down jet setting life that he leads doing whatever it is he's doing these days i i can't help but think that he's now batman i think he is he hasn't been in the same room as batman i was just gonna say we don't see them in the same room together and and is no longer really available in evenings only in evenings during the day he's fine yes but when it comes to evenings he's like you just can't seem to get hold of him no so um unfortunately he is and is off fighting crime he is the uh, Caped Crusader. Oh, hang on. No, wasn't the Caped Crusader Superman? Oh, that's going to bug me now. Anyway, so <laughs> in Ant's place, we have uh, an equal superhero with us. Um, <laughs> sir, would you care to introduce yourself as a, as a newbie to the Vanderhoff and Co. fold? Hello. Uh, my name's AJ. Um, how are you guys doing? All, all good? Yeah, very good. good. Yeah, yourself? Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, very good. I, I wanted to cut in there and say, I think Batman, you might be correct, Batman, I think, is the Cape Crusader. Oh, no, I thought Superman was the Cape Crusader. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, oh, you got me doubting myself now. No, I was like, no, when I... you were talking, I was so sure, I was like, yeah, no, it's definitely Batman, and then, yeah, I, I've got Google at my fingertips, but, no, yeah. let, let's, let's commit to one, and, uh... Yeah, you are right, <laughs> yeah. we'll the Cape then... Crusader is Batman. Uh, okay. I realise later we're wrong. <laughs> There's a weight off my mind. <laughs> Superman's Man of Steel. That's true. So, Cape Crusader. Although they've both got many names, so it's it's it does get a little bit confusing once in a while. And they both wear capes. It doesn't really narrow it down much, to be honest, does it? You know? No. Yeah. If so there was like, yeah, if there was only one superhero with a cape, that would make the You'd whole thing right. a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, be less to remember. So, was, AJ, where are you from? Yeah, I host a podcast with my uh, my friend Nathan Taylor called uh, Sup Dude. Um, we've been going for, I guess, coming from four years now, actually. Oh, wow. Uh, it, yeah, we've podcast been a bit... Sp- veteran. Yeah. <laughs> we've been a bit sporadic over the last year or so. There was sort of had a couple of kind of three or four month gaps in between episodes and such. But, um, yeah, we're trying to get back on back on it in the new year and stuff. We, I think we're, we're going to be recording our own Christmas episode, speaking of Christmas episodes. Uh, next week at some point, so um, yeah, hoping to. Get... <laughs> that so, might not happen, but you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> what's what's sup, dude? Um, I'm not asking you how you are. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit of everything, really. I mean, I know you guys have got a bit more of a sort of gaming sort of focus on your one, mm-hmm. um, but we t- it, 
just generally seem to sort of talk a, a little bit about whatever's been going on, kind of entertainment, media, with each other and stuff. And if, like, actually, the last episode, we spent a good 10, 15 minutes talking about how Nathan's going to get laser eye surgery. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, it comes with anything, really. But, um, so he's we, actually getting laser eyes. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I was a good running joke that I had going, and I think he was a bit sick of it after a while. Cause I, Is he after eight minutes. <laughs> Sorry? Is he going to get a cape? Well, I, I hope so. I, I hope he can pull it off for one thing. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> and we start calling him the Cape Crusader. Really confused matters. Um, oh no, that's not <laughs> Crusader. UK. Cape, Cru- Cape Crusader of Christchurch. <laughs> yeah, no, see there you go, triple C. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like I say, we, we talk about a little bit of everything. Um, we've previously done a few sort of um, kind of ongoing segments about um, different movies and whatnot. We we had a really long ongoing thing where we were kind of reviewing every. Uh, every Bond movie we're watching one a week and then saying what we could actually bother to remember about it and stuff so um, yeah you know, oh, go, go, cool. go check it out, go listen people, yay, self promo uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what did you think of Spectre? Um, I, I enjoyed it, I thought it was um, it, it was a little different from Skyfall um, in sort of tone and everything and um I'm, I'm still not 100 percent as to whether I prefer Spectre or Skyfall. I'm leaning more towards Skyfall at the moment, but I, I'm going to have to wait for the Blu-ray to come out to give it a, give it another watch. I, I did enjoy it though. It was, um, I think maybe 10, 15 minutes too long. Yeah. Could it, a few bits there could have been trimmed out, and it would have been a bit more streamlined. But um, no, I enjoyed it. They played with some of the concepts that you know sort of been going on through the Bond movies for decades now, and just sort of flipped them a little bit, or you know, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Okay. See, because I went, I finally got to go and see it on Sunday, and mm. I just, I kind of, it didn't feel like a Bond film. I'd agree with you there. It definitely, um, well, it's sort of tying into what I was saying with the sort of changing up some of the, you know, sort of ongoing concepts as they, there, there was sort of some bits in it, I thought, I can't think of specifics now, because looking at the date on when we actually recorded our episode where we talked about it, it was like a month and a half ago. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> my brain is just not cooperating. Um, so go and check that out, people. Yeah, yeah, if you want to hear a slightly more fresh take on it from me, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, check out the last episode of dude. But um, yeah, no, I'd agree with you. It, it didn't really feel as much like a Bond film. Like Compared to, say, Skyfall or Casino Royale, they really did feel like, okay, this is it, we're in a Bond film. Mm. Like, um, but yeah, um, Spectre, I think felt more, it felt more like this is a big action spy film, but maybe not quite your classic Bond. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. The, my one biggest complaint, Christoph Waltz was criminally underused. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd see there. the bloke from Sherlock, who was, oh. uh, who was Moriarty, that guy. Yeah. I mean, that was a twist that you could see coming like, oh, from when the trailers for other films are still playing. Flares yeah. and signs and a marching band from miles away. I think he got a good couple of like bad guy head turns in there and stuff. You can always tell who's the bad guy in a movie by <laughs> if they just slowly turn their head towards someone. Like that's a good early indicator. But I think it might have even just been like a kind of a typecasting thing. So I'm so used to seeing him as Moriarty at this point. When you put him in, I'm just gonna like look at him and go, well, clearly he's gonna be the bad guy, even if it's like a romantic comedy or something. <laughs> which I don't know whether he's been in, but like, it's like a light-hearted children's film. Like, well, that guy's going to kill a lot of people. Like, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it, uh, I've just been spoiled by Sherlock, really. But, um, yeah. yeah. But he plays Moriarty so well. He does, yeah. I'm, I'm not complaining about it. I'm just saying, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I did come out of it kind of like, mm, yeah. What did you think of the ending? Like, no spoilers, if I guess, if, if listeners haven't checked it out, or, or maybe we don't care. The, um, well, I'll keep it vague, but I wasn't. I just, I kind of, I kind of sneered at it and was like, "Really? Mm. We talking on the bridge?" Yeah, 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 we're, yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> Spoilers! Spoilers! There's a bridge involved. There's a bridge in it. Oh god. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna um, go sit now. Yeah, dramatic fear of bridges. <laughs> I don't like bridges. Yeah, you won't like done. the um, Swedish Danish cop show, The Bridge. Then. Oh no! Just no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of me. I'm out that's of it. it. I'm out. Swedish <laughs> Danish cop shows feels that's it. He's that's, hung up. Yeah. He's gone. I, think, I think it's Swedish Danish. I don't wanna again, my mum watches it and I've occasionally walked in and been like, What are you watching? The bridge and I get told to get out because it's subtitled. 
they're like, I don't mind watching my programs. Uh, not not so much, no. I just get ignored. She doesn't sound like a character from Monty Python, then. Not, not all the time, no. Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> Only one quarter. <laughs> Occasionally sounds a little bit like the drill sergeant guy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, whilst we're on the subject of films, we'll get it out in the open now. Star Wars? Pardon? So, when, you, when are you going to see it? I'm going Friday morning. Uh, I'm which so at this point about 36 hours. It's um, the excitement is mounting a little bit. I actually think whilst I was on Twitter today, I saw a massive spoiler. And oh I'm god, no! Don't pass it on, whatever you do. Cause, I'm not like... going to. It's <laughs> cruel. It's bad enough that I have this in the back of my mind because I'm going tomorrow evening, mm. and I just I'm trying to shake this image from my head, and I just I can't because it. Ah. Uh, See, the only, I, I've seen one spoiler, and it is literally a car spoiler with Star Wars written on it. I saw that post oh, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> caption, I'll just leave this huge Star Wars spoiler here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or just worn that joke thin. Yeah. I've, I've been trying my very best to avoid everything. I'm, I'm almost going into it like as blind as possible. I'm going into it, um, like, I've watched the teaser, I've watched the trailer, and I'm willfully, like, ignoring all of, like, because there's a lot of sites like Geek and Sundry and Nerdist and that, I'm like, check out our latest Star Wars, like, theories or yeah, yeah, rumours yeah. and things, and I'm just like, oh, no, 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 just want to go in. I mean, it's Star Wars, so there's not going to be any, I was about to say there won't be any huge twists, but then Empire Strikes Back, it was a pretty big twist at the time, really, wasn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I just want to go in completely blind. I know the I know who the characters are, but that's it, really. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, no, that's exactly yeah. what I'm trying to do. Avoid. I've seen Not a couple sure. of like review headlines, but that's it. I'm go I want to go in as fresh to it as possible. I want nothing to cloud my judgment at all and skew my opinion on. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's the same thing, really. I mean, I had something I was going to say then. Um, yeah, I, I actually had to click off of a um, a video because uh, it was a sort of sort of cut out piece of some sixty minutes or something like that. It was like watch John Williams score the thing, and I'm a huge music guy, mm -hmm. and um, I was like, oh, that's cool. I actually want to see John Williams working in the studio and that. And then, but then about halfway through the video, it cut to them trying to you know fit it to the edit, and I was like, no, nope, got to cut away because I don't want to even like it's just like the start of the first scene. I'm like, no, I don't even want to know what the opening shot is. I don't want to. <laughs> I was like, music beats good, but like. Until Friday, I'll get it. I just saved it to my YouTube watch later because I'm like, I will definitely watch that later once it's not spoiling anything for me. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I uh, video uh, a link popped up, I think, and it said, opening um, text uh, leaked. Click here for video, and I clicked it, and it started, and it just had the Star Wars thing. I'm like, why am I watching this? <laughs> and I just closed down the page. I was like, did I briefly lose my mind? <laughs> I had I just no idea why I did that at all. I had a I had a also uh, speaking of like near spoilers. Um, I guess like three or four weeks ago, and I'm pretty sure thinking back that it was just like someone trolling, but I accidentally clicked into a thread on uh, something awful where it just had something vaguely Star Wars related in the title, and the very first post was just someone just going, it was like Star Wars leaked. Here's all the plot points, and I was like, uh, no, no. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they were just making them all up, but I was like, I can't chance it. I'm just clicking off of this. So <laughs> people are actively trying to spoil stuff. I know. They are, yeah. And it's it's pure clickbait. And it works though, because I mean, for every you know person like us who's trying to avoid it, there's probably someone who's like, oh yeah, I really want to see what's happening and stuff without before they even go into it, which is a shame, really. Wait, yeah, I'll leave. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, no, carry on. Sorry, I'm just interrupting everybody now. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. When are you go and Phil. I'm going to be going Sunday. I've watched um, Phantom Menace today, so I'm going to... Why would you do that to yourself? Yeah, my condolences. <laughs> Phantom well, Menace is so boring. But yeah, but at the same time... No. I, I'm just going to... I'm re-watching them. Like, I was going to watch two today, uh, like one and two. I was going to watch three tomorrow, along with watching Clone Wars, the animated, series, uh, animated show um, movie tomorrow as well, and then watch... Uh, the animated show at work or the next day and then try and fit the next three in before I go. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> it's a good plan. I actually, I've done something similar, but I just watched the, um, rewatched the, you know, one to six. I probably should have 
put Clone Wars on in between two and three just to kind of give myself a little bit of relief from Hayden Christensen. But um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, uh, I, I'd say actually for the prequels, episode one is probably, I mean, it was is the worst of them, but out of what's held up, it's held up a lot better than episode two. Episode two is yeah, episode two's the best one. The CG I don't think has aged as well. Like whereas episode one, while it does have its terrible CG elements in, like literally that, that last battle with the Gungans and the droids is like somebody has leaning on copy paste, <laughs> and they're all exa- exactly <laughs> the same character model and everything, and they're just doing stuff. But um, but like the actual, I think overall it holds up a little better because it's um got all of the real backgrounds and whatnot whereas what you get onto episode two and it's a little bit more a little bit more blue screen going on and yeah. the technology hadn't really i mean it, it was getting there but some of the stuff just doesn't quite hasn't quite gone over that last hurdle of looking like we how we expect stuff now i'm sure it was fine at the time and i don't remember having any problems at the time with it but on a rewatch last week i was like uh ah, that's not quite so good plus you know terrible dialogue and whatnot but yes oh my god <laughs> What was the third one? Revenge of the Sith. That's the one. The dialogue in that, it is painful. It was clearly yeah. like, okay, we've got nine we've got ninety minutes now to fit in all the plot points that we plan to do for the whole yeah. <laughs> prequel trilogy. Um but I re- I actually realised what um bugged me about it so much. Which you've got these big action sequences where the camera's flying around and everything, and you've got lightsabers flashing and stuff, and cut to a conversation where it's two people sat in chairs, and you've got three shots. You've got a wide shot, and you've got one over the shoulder shot on each, and it's just terribly, it's boring. Like, you're cutting straight from a, like a huge action sequence where you, you know, your brain doesn't know where to look, but you know, you know, stuff's going on to just no movement. Occasionally, someone will stand up and then sit down again. <laughs> And then, or someone will turn, you know, you get your Palpatine evil head turn, as, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think he actually does four of them in one conversation at once, is how you know he's the bad guy. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it, four, four yeah, <laughs> he's, he's topping the leaderboard on the head turns. But, um, yeah, it just, I don't know, it, it kind of, it, it's almost going from, like, big sci-fi action sequences to soap opera. And I'm not talking, like, you know, kind of, you can fit in some, romance and stuff into whatever any any movie you can fit a bit of it into but this is literally like it's cutting to like a sort of like a i don't know like a sort of sort of afternoon kind of like <laughs> as the as the time turns kind of <laughs> is that even turns. a thing yeah yeah as the head turns <laughs> sort of thing like i don't know it's a bit sort of jarring on a yeah. you watch really oh, that's just my view of it anyway no but, i can I, I actually I haven't looked at it. I, I've, it's been so long since I've seen them. Um, yeah, that's that's why I'm rewatching them at the moment, just so I can like. Cause I've I've started reading. Well, I started rereading the books again, and I was just like, I shouldn't really reread books while I'm technically working. <laughs> I should probably watch a show in the background so I can like catch up with everything. Even though episode three has got my least favorite part in it. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, we all know. Wait, uh, uh, you enlighten me. What's the what's the least favorite? Although is it just a no? <laughs> well, my my favorite it character like is he's been slowed down, and he's like no. <laughs> <laughs> he's got it's coffee stuck in his mouth. My yeah. favorite character is uh, Kit Fisto. Oh god, yeah, he um, does sound like a punk. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> oh no, they don't shoot him, do they? He goes down like a punk off screen. Yeah. Mm. How, who was I thinking of? Who am I thinking of? Good. Oh, I'm what? thinking of um, Plo Koon who gets shot down. Yeah. Oh, Plo Koon. Yeah, that's just upsetting. That is like is. he's such a badass, and then he is, and yeah. gets killed by Zoom. They even make a big deal in the Clone Wars TV show, like showing how good of a pilot he is and everything, and then he just gets shot down. That's just rubbing <laughs> in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was another one of my sort of favorite characters. I think him and Kit Fisty. But Kit Fisty's definitely my favorite. Yeah, he's just, you know, he's got that big smile. He knows what's up. <laughs> he's, not, he, he's so he's happy to be wielding like, a lightsaber. Your boy, I'm a Jedi. <laughs> Basically what he sounds like in the Clone Wars animated show. Oh, does he? Is he like <laughs> Levi Have Ritz? we not seen it? No, I haven't. He's like proper Jamaican, like yeah, chilled out. Gave, <laughs> there's like a two or three part one where they're underwater on um, on Kalamari. And like, he's in that, like Jamaicaning it up. Like... <laughs> Basically, is yeah. Yeah, oh, he's got his shirt off and everything. He's swimming around. Oh, I'm gonna have to check it out. Uh, you, you've got to do it. You got to do it. Yes. So that I think we'll end up for Star Wars there. Yes. Yep. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm we, excited. 
Yes. I'm, I think everyone's excited. We'll, I think uh, what yeah. I might try and do is if I'm not too busy at work tomorrow, I might try and watch episode one. And then because ep- I think episode one is so bad in my book, or even I might even try and watch uh, the third one, which you told me and I've forgotten again. I might try and watch that, and then, at least if Force Awakens isn't all that great, it will still seem better in comparison to the new trilogy. That's a pretty good plan. I will say, the pod racing section holds up pretty well. Oh, I love the pod racing section. Yeah, because oh. there's hardly any dialogue, and it's... Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, and it, it, I, I, Plus, I still enjoyed that bit. You can, you can kind of try and think that, at some point, Anakin might plough into the side of a mountain. Yeah, it's so close on like many occasions. <laughs> yeah. So you can oh, what a shame. <laughs> and you but just before, think, it, before we leave, some... <laughs> before we leave episode one, and um, then my final thought on that is, I saw a really great gif. Um, there's that one shot in episode one where they're they're checking out his pod to make sure it works before the race, and, <laughs> and he's going, "It's working, it's working," like because the wind's blowing back and everything. <laughs> but someone had then intercut it with the shot from Terminator Two, where she's holding onto the fences with her arms up in the same pose, and it's just a sh- just a skeleton. So it's like <laughs> it's subtitle, and it's Anna King going, "It's working, it's working," and just cuts to like a blasted skeleton and fire going, <laughs> burning off her flesh. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best thing. I might have to tweet, to tweet it out or something, yeah. <laughs> it so, was pretty good. video games. Indeed. Computer video games. games. Do you get to play many, AJ? I do, although um, in prep for this, I actually, um, I was, you know, giving the heads up of, like, you know, the favourite games from the year and that. Going through my Steam, I realised that actually most of the games that I got, that I thought were like, oh, that's new this year, um, came out at the end of last year. Or <laughs> <laughs> I just... I was actually thinking that myself. I was like, oh, what what games have I really liked this year? And I'm looking back and I'm like, all the ones I've completed were like Christmas last year. Yeah, I thought, I thought Alien Isolation was good. And then I got it. I remembered I got it before Christmas last year. So that that's out. And then it, it, some of them are ones that maybe came out last year that I actually bought this year. So that I don't know if that counts. Steam or not. sales. Yeah, that, I mean, that's how, that's how I look at it. I'm sure we can go with that. Sure we can. <laughs> yeah. So what have you been playing lately? What? I've uh, going back to Star Wars. Ironically, um, the new expansion for um, Old Republic. I've been enjoying quite a lot. Oh yeah, it, is it good? It's very good. I mean, up till now the game's been pretty much not a WoW clone, but very similar in gameplay style and that. Um, you know, you got your short quests and that. With you know, you got conversations in between them and things, but it's very much sort of like right, okay, now you're back into the MMO sort of model in between. Mm-hmm quests and that this one has added like a full sort of cinematic storyline that your character gets taken away from all of the multiplayer things and that and a lot of the stuff that you know your companions and things that you've earned throughout the thing are just they disappear for a good long time so it's kind of almost like a i mean lengthwise it's probably longer than dark forces jedi knight any of those old ones mm. in just the extra storyline uh, i'm i really enjoy it it's basically if episode seven wasn't coming out this year and battlefront wasn't coming out this year i'd probably say it's the most star wars thing that's been out for a while just in terms of how good the storytelling is in it and that and, and all of that and it all, it all feels like okay right now we're back in it now we're back in the universe and stuff so i've been i've been enjoying that quite a lot but um that definitely came out this year <laughs> Although, um, the uh, obviously the base game's been out a couple of years but it's sort of um, it's they, they've they've changed up a lot of the gameplay to accomp- you know to sort of accommodate the the new features from this expansion. So yeah, I'm enjoying that. I'm, I'm playing a lot of that at the moment. Cool. Are you so you just Steam? Um, Steam Origin. I mean, I've got a PS4, um, but I mainly just use it for playing Blu-rays. If I'm absolutely honest, <laughs> um, I uh, you know they I, do have Blu-ray players separately. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but yeah, I've um, they're, they're still a fairly similar price though, to be honest. Or are they? I don't know. <laughs> I, um, I think you can pick them up. I mean, it varies in quality, really. With yeah. There, there is the occasional game I do pick up for PS4, so I have sort of got my money's worth on it and that. But, um, yeah, mostly I'm PC gamer. Sweet. PC Master Race. <laughs> well, yeah, I, um, I, d- I actually do a fair amount of uh, uh, music recording and video editing and that. So when I uh, built my PC, it as a result of needing to have the specs to do, you know, quite a lot of high-intensity sort of footage you know it, it uses a lot of power to do the stuff i need to do yeah so as a result it's it's a bit of a beast game wise as well so yeah win win <laughs> yeah. i'm not complaining about it <laughs> yeah uh fallout 4 i've been playing that came that definitely came out this year uh, i'm not particularly far into it 
um, so far. I'm about 11 or 12 hours, but all I keep doing is just... I haven't done hardly any of the main quest line. You've probably just... done more than me, guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I end up doing is just building stuff in my settlement or going out looking for screws and clipboards and things to <laughs> it's like there's a real kind of uh lost sense of urgency like the main quest line i don't know it's not really a spoiler it's kind of the first thing that happens after you get out of the vault is you you're kind of trying to find where your son's been taken um but i'm really not feeling the urgency where <laughs> like, yeah. i'm going to be tracking down my yeah, like, yeah i'm going to be tracking down my son but really what i'm doing is tracking down components so i can build a slightly better generator that's <laughs> That's more important to me than my son. It is, man. I think he might be dead. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I have no idea what's going on in the storyline, but I'm not really 100% sure I care right now. I just got to get those lights working across the street. (laughs) Like, (laughs) it's way more important right now. (laughs) Well, he'd appreciate, when you get your son back, he'd appreciate having power and everything. That's, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the working turrets and that, I mean, he's got to feel safe. (laughs) Unless he walks up the turrets and gets shot, then... Well, well, that's his own fault, you know. It, should it, it, like you should have said your name before you got to the like the yeah, area. It's the future, you know. You should know better. Yes. Come on. <laughs> You've have, did you restart your game, Phil? No, I haven't. I've I've played it again. I've managed to kill the first Deathclaw eventually, but I'm a bit stuck in real life, to be honest, on that one. <laughs> no. I just I literally I move around, and now I've only I've got like no ammo because I've taken all the ammo off the street, like off everyone. To take out that first death claw on survival mode, which makes it impossible for me to do anything now. So I'm kind of crying. <laughs> <laughs> just in a corner crying. Yeah, I'm literally crying. And I'm just thinking, why did I put this on survival mode? I can take it down again, but I'm just like, well, I'm playing on survival mode, so I'll just keep going. Eventually something will work out well for me, I hope. <laughs> yeah. I think there is a perk that lets you um fight you you find more ammo on corpses. Yeah, there well, is. Obviously, you've got to get to the point where you've got that unlocked. Got something. Yeah. <laughs> you've actually got to get to the corpses. To get <laughs> it's that. true. You have to create these corpses first yes. to get the. Yeah, uh... that's that's one of the main issues. <laughs> yeah. I need the ammo to make the corpses, but I need the corpses to get the ammo. The other thing yes. you could do is get some kind of melee weapon and try just sprinting at people and smacking them. I've seen someone do a run where they've got some kind of um, the the spike baseball bat. I find quite useful. Yeah, um, I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't, uh, if you get any baseball bat, you can mod it to have spikes in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. I have to look for a baseball bat. But um, a lot of things that you uh, you find uh, in survival mode are a lot more, <laughs> a hell of a lot stronger than you are. So you kind of go down quite quickly. For example, I when really, I no, first started, answer. that's right. When I first started on that death claw, like I went outside in the power armor. One hit killed me. That's not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I stayed on the roof for a bit sniping at it, but um, then it kept wandering off at the other end of town. I was like, oh, this isn't quite good. I need to, you know, obviously it's not going to let me continue till I kill this Deathclaw. He's obviously yeah. hanging around waiting for me to kill him. It took me about um, two hours to kill him. Okay, I'm definitely not trying survival mode yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just playing on normal. <laughs> I, I, ran, I, was, um, I used up all the minigun ammo on it. Um, I then used up all my ammo that I had from, like, all the from the ground from all the um oh, what were they i can't remember what were there before raiders, when you I think. all the raiders yeah i used up all that ammo the only way that i had to kill him was run up to like where he was spawning and then run back again and the guy on the roof to shoot at him and me running into the church again just why well, not the church but into that building just constantly that was how i did it just kind of baiting him towards the building and that yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took took some time I was kind of crying as I was doing it, going, this is not going to be fun. <laughs> I fought one later on, and like I was down to, like, uh, this is another one, it was down in some dungeon or whatever, um, and, uh, like, it, it spawned, like, um, I would, you know, I was kind of walking up a hill, and it drops through the ceiling, and I was like, well, that's not good. <laughs> and um, survive, I'd never be able to get that one on survival mode. It took me ages anyway, and just throwing mines at it and everything, and just like, why won't you die? <laughs> Leave me alone. Find yeah, like a cupboard to hide in. A lot of people tell me all these like amazing things they've been in and the struggle to survive. I'm just like, if you've struggled on normal or hard, what am I going to be like with no weapons on survival? <laughs> <laughs> what made you jump straight into survival mode? Or did you makes... play a little bit of normal first? Um, I think I played normal up to the stage of killing one uh, one roach, and I was just like, I've got to play this on survival because it makes it more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, oh. 
I immediately regret this decision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slowly tears coming off my face after the like the next three three uh, rad roaches. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> they nearly killed me. <laughs> like how many hours of gameplay have you clocked up, Phil? What on that game? Yeah. I don't really know. It's probably uh, it's taken me a couple of hours, so probably up four. Oh, okay. And I've just. I was expecting done... you to be like, well, I've been pl- I've clocked up like fifty hours, and I've just literally got past this first death claw. <laughs> Admittedly, once you kill that death claw, it's not too bad for a while because you back down to regular enemies. But um, like mm. you say, you just got to get yourself some ammo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, is I know you've not played that much, Phil, but would yep. you say is uh, Fallout 4 the massive game of the year that everyone has been expecting? Uh, well, has been hoping it would be i believe so personally i haven't as i say as you say i haven't actually managed to get as much time into it as i wanted to mainly because of survival mode which is my own fault <laughs> but I've, i have enjoyed the moments that i have spent running up and down the same road just to kill a death claw i'm not going to deny that in the slightest it has been enjoyable and a little bit tear jerking um that, that <laughs> happy moment when it finally fell on the floor was quite it's quite good, I'm not going to lie. That's the um, point where you've got to remember to press save at that point. Yeah. <laughs> the worst <laughs> thing is, I just imagined if I died just at the same point that it died, I was like, oh no. <laughs> Luckily enough, it, it died and I saved. I was like, oh, I could get a pint now and chill. <laughs> <laughs> if it's got to the point where actually playing the game is stressful rather than stress relieving, it's probably a little bit <laughs> not, not quite what it's uh, designed for. Yeah. I don't find it stressful. I just find it quite upsetting when I die and it's nearly dead, and I'm just like, oh, did all that time. <laughs> but I <laughs> see the thing is, I enjoy it more when I've killed something finally on the like the harder modes because so it, there's a uh, sense of accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, I can go. Yeah, it took me like two hours to kill this one death floor, and everyone was like, it took me like five minutes, mate. What, what, what was your <laughs> problem? <sighs> You just don't understand, man. You just don't understand. <laughs> just a single tear rolls down your cheek and you just hit whisper it on the wind. Survival mode. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. That is literally all it is. <laughs> well, you've got no one to blame but yourself for that, really. I know. <laughs> it just makes it more entertaining when everyone's telling me about these amazing things. I'm just like... <laughs> well, we do, he, AJ, we do keep telling him that, but he won't hear anything. He won't hear anything against it. He's, no. you know, you're in too deep now. Yeah, I am. Too yeah, just one death claw in. I'm too deep. <laughs> I suppose if you'd have given up like the first time the death claw killed you, that would have been like, well, you didn't get too far. I'm perfectly happy to go back to normal mode. But after the, like you say, you've spent three hours killing the death claw. It's kind of, well, I can't give up now. I spent three hours killing a death claw. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> basically, yeah. I, I yeah. might as well just continue. It's the way forward. <laughs> so, game of the year or? Is there better titles that you guys have played? I'm just thinking, um, I've made a sort of short list of stuff I, well, one that I thought came out this year or two um, (laughs) did. I mean, as for stuff that I've played that came out this year, I'd probably say, yeah, Fallout 4 is up there. Um, Other than that, I mean, I've I've written down GTA 5 PC. Obviously, GTA 5 came out like two, three years ago, but the PC version only came out sort of June, July time. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I I had it on PS3 originally. I didn't get particularly far before my PS3 fried itself. Mm. Um, so I had a couple of years there where I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to buy another PS3. I'll just get PS4. And then I didn't want to spend 50 quid for the PS4 version. So I finally got around to getting it again this year. And I, I've really enjoyed playing that. I haven't got an... Um, well, no, I, I suppose I've got a fair way into it. But um, GTA, well, and like any in that series, I end up just messing around. Yeah. Half the time, I get to the point where like, right, I've got a good selection of guns here, got a little bit of cash for spending on hospitals. <laughs> Let's just go and cause some trouble yeah. rather than do the quest and that. But yeah, so I've, I've had a good time playing that. Rockstar have really done a good job with the PC version. Oh yeah, it's optimized really well. One feature I actually um, really appreciate is um, when you're setting your graphics settings, and a lot of games don't do this. It'll actually give you a kind of updating meter of like, right, this is on this settings. This is how much of your graphics memory it's going to use 
mm. um, before you apply the settings. And it, it's obviously tying into your graphics card, so it knows exactly how much memory you've got, rather than just like, we think on a random card, it would do this much. Whereas some other games, like I previously played, it was a bit of sort of a hit and miss game as to like adjusting settings to get, get it smooth. Yeah. GTA, I was able to like put it right up to just before the line, know that it's still going to look really good and I'm not going to get any slowdown or anything and just a one one button thing. I, I really appreciated that. That was some good optimization on that. Yeah. Um, the movie maker. I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> it does look fun though. Uh, a friend of mine does. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel where he sort of does, he, he. I've known him from school. He does kind of rap music and stuff. Yeah. Um, but a lot of them are kind of parodies of songs, and he sort of works gaming things into them. And he'd made a couple of GTA sort of based ones with that movie maker. It looked pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, that's quite cool. Actually, speaking of PC games and being optimized. Did you happen to uh, have the misfortune of playing Arkham Knight? I haven't. No, um, it did pop up. I I put it on my uh, Steam wish list uh, when it first um, came out, and well, actually before it came out, because I was thinking, all right, yeah, I've played all the others. They've all been pretty good. Origins is a little bit dodgy in places, but whatever. Um, and then when it actually came out, I don't think I quite had enough cash to get it at that point. I'm glad I didn't. So a friend of mine got it, and he said, "Oh God, no." <laughs> I've wasted my money now, and it was—it must have been about seven or eight months before they actually. It's now you can buy it again now, but they—they they took it off sale for that yeah. that whole duration. Um, apparently, it's not quite so bad now. They've fixed a lot of the problems, but um, yeah, I managed to sort of dodge that particular batarang. <laughs> um, <good>. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I still haven't got around to buying it. But they've got it at a slightly friendlier price of. Thirty four ninety nine, which is still not great, but I suppose sort of makes up for the uh, <laughs> yeah, terrible I mean, launch I, there. I heard that they were giving all of the previous titles with it as well. That... Uh, that I haven't seen that on the the page. Uh, I'm actually I'll just click onto it now. Um, yeah, no, they 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 don't seem to be offering that anymore. It might just be a thing of like if you bought it before. Oh yeah, perhaps they fixed it. Um, but yeah, I mean I, I will end up playing it at some point because they. have you know, presumably fixed most of it by now. I was hearing some horror stories of sort of people with ridiculously high-end systems, like running the best graphics card money could buy, getting like 10 to 20 frames per second on it. And then you <laughs> call, call the Batmobile, and it's basically a slideshow kind of thing. It's, <laughs> it, but then it seemed to be sort of a bit hit and miss. Those people with lower-end systems were getting, um, va- well, okay performance out of it. So it seemed to be... a it, it, you know, flip a coin, you might get a decent game, you might not get a decent game. Yeah. <laughs> Depending it's, which way the wind's blowing. It's it's quite strange, though, because the, the PlayStation 4 version that I've played is beautiful. I mean, you get a few glitchy bits and pieces here and there. Yeah. Nothing graphically, and it, it's just like, in this day and age, how do a company release on one um, platform, or, well, I mean... PS4 and Xbox One, you release it on what, on those platforms and there's a few bits and pieces here and there that they can patch and yet it comes out on PC and it's and it's an absolute mess, it's just... The, the story I'd heard was that they'd, um, the, the console version was made by the sort of main developer and then when it came to doing the PC port rather than doing it themselves which I think they'd done on City and Asylum, yeah. they, fa- they farmed it out to another company um, which I think possibly were the ones who did Origins, because I know Origins was made... So the main studio did Asylum and City. Arc, uh, Origins was made by this other one, obviously using the same similar code or whatever, but um, it's a different studio, and they'd, yeah. they'd farmed out the PC port to this other studio who just completely dropped the ball on it. And um, as far as I know, <laughs> there's, a, there's a sort of... Uh, I don't know if it's a blog post or something, but from the main studio when they realised they're having all these problems, basically going like, yep, not our fault. <laughs> well, well, it was them. Yeah, we, we paid these people to do it, and they didn't yeah. do it. Um, okay. So that that was a, that was a story I had. Uh, how much of that is correct or not? It's, you know, up for debate. But um, that that's that's what I'd heard. Fair dues. I mean, I'd go so far as to say that Arkham Knight is probably one of my more favourite games of the year. The the depth on it, and it just it takes into account the whole Batman history. Yeah, really, really good job with that. I mean, the Batmobile just. The Batmobile bits are all right, but yeah, very good game. Yeah, I mean, I've heard really great things about it, which is why I'm still going to play it at some point. It's just, uh, it's just a case I think that they they really dropped the ball with the PC port of it. Mm. Like, all the stuff, I guess, technically is still in there. It just they so just didn't really. I mean, I, I don't know the ins and outs of technically how it didn't work, but it seemed to me like the game's there. 
it's just really not running well. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I mean, I, yeah, everything I've seen, everything I've heard from people who play console was, yeah, this is a really great game. And then uh, just, you know, I wasn't gonna. <laughs> I, I've played the other ones on PC. I wanted to stick with what I'm used to and that. And uh, for seven months, I can't. No. While they're fixing it, so fun time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, that's a real shame that. But um, yeah, no, it's it's still it's definitely definitely on the to play list for me. And another one I would recommend as well. Oh, oh no, I'm not entirely sure it came out on PC, but I'm. Uh, oh yeah, no, of course it did because you had the anyway. Another game that I've really enjoyed um, and keep meaning to get back in, but it is such a time vacuum, is Metal Gear Solid Fla- Phantom Pain. Yes, that's definitely um, also, that's, uh, again, on the list, but I'm at <laughs> 45.99 for Metal Gear at the moment when I've still got a lot of other games to play is not yeah. quite... Um, it's uh, I've, I've always been a big fan of the Metal Gear series, and... Um, Ground Zeroes was really great, um, so that that's definitely one I'm, I'm looking forward to, and I've heard some great things. I, <laughs> I have seen uh, some pretty funny videos where people have gone into the PC version and swapped models around, so there's a, yes. some dodgy ones where uh, I'm presuming, is, is it Quiet, a character? Quiet, yeah, the sniper. Yeah. Yeah, um, they swap it, her for the dog. I haven't seen that one. I've seen when they swap her for Ocelot. So there's some scene where she's <laughs> like... Ocelot's showering with him. Yeah, oh, there's, <laughs> the one I saw was like, there's a helicopter and it's raining or something and she's sort of bending over, leaning out the window and that, except it's Ocelot. And that, <laughs> it's pretty funny. I've seen um, um, They've swapped the character models for Ocelot and the dog. <laughs> and so you kind of see Ocelot scoot, scooting in in this kind of weird deformed position. And in my head, it was going to be the other way around. Like literally, like you got Ocelot. Oh no, the, like you've got um, scenes with Ocelot in, but like a weirdly stretched dog model. Like, <laughs> like, like they've they've taken. It's almost got like because obviously it, it's fitting it to the you know whatever animation points there are. So I don't know. I mean, presumably you could do that just as well. Hopefully the game wouldn't crash, but. <laughs> but the, the one things that drew uh, the one thing that drew my attention to the PC version was the fact that you could put your own songs as the music for when your helicopter comes in to pick you up. And oh, that's pretty great. Ammo and stuff. So you've yeah. got uh, there's countless videos on YouTube of people like the Team America theme tune. That will work, yeah. <laughs> John, Cena's, John Cena's entrance music. Um, <laughs> just loads of different things and i'm like oh man that's the one thing missing from the ps4 version that's what i really liked about gta 5 on pc as well is that you can just drop a bunch of mp3s into a folder and it will make your own radio station yes and um it, there's a little bit of banter between pre-recorded hosts on the um in between songs which doesn't it doesn't relate to the actual songs but it still feels like one of the in-game radio stations yeah. you know it, it comes on when you get in a car and stuff and that so it's not like you're not just running the game with like itunes in the background or whatever it's uh, it actually sort of puts it in as part of the game so but that's pretty great that you can do something similar in metal gear yeah i mean it's it is only I th- i'm pretty sure it's only when your helicopter's coming in i think it's yeah only when it flies in even so every time you call in i mean you do you're in the helicopter a lot mm. um and the in the in-game music you're kind of limited to whatever cassettes you find around the map yeah uh, as well as some of the sort of the pre just the, the the list that you get given at the start of sort of basic music yeah yeah as i say i mean that's another one i kind of really look forward to <laughs> i have my uh, i've got a long list of games that i'm like yes i'm definitely gonna get that but just quickly followed by at some point yes and yeah uh, yeah <laughs> steam sales are my kind of my nemesis is well nemesis i suppose nemesis works in that they're great that i can get a lot of games but then i've got a whole bunch of games that i'm like yes i should get that that's gonna be really great i'm gonna play that and there's some that i've been sat on my hard drive for it's like a year. <laughs> yeah or there's some that i bought like ages ago and i still haven't played <laughs> yeah the issue with doom sales is just there's too much good out there when they put it on and you're like oh i better get that because i really wanted to play that when it first came out i'll buy yeah. it and next minute oh like i, I was really excited it. to get watchdogs um pretty cheap on a steam sale and i haven't played it yet like not miss it much <laughs> yeah I've, I've heard yeah i mean that's why i wait for the sale to be honest but um yeah i heard it had its okay moments and that but i was like yeah okay that, yeah i heard about that at the time I heard, I heard it had its issues but you know i'll definitely play you know whatever it was i can't remember I'd, if i start tallying up how much i spent on steam i'll probably have a heart attack but um <laughs> um 
yeah you know and i've had it installed and it's like it's not a tiny file it's like 40 gigabytes I just leave it on my hard drive and i haven't <laughs> touched it yet this is why steam is my nemesis because i'm like it just sucks up money for games that i haven't played oh, and yes. probably won't play for a long time <laughs> And, uh, and just sits on your PC. Yeah, yeah. And I and yet yeah, again I just go back and play like Old Republic or something. <laughs> so, what about you, Phil? Uh what have I been playing? I I don't know really. I've I've got been playing Battlefront for ages and getting into that and I, I do enjoy it. Um it just feels a bit lackluster for how much you pay for the game for how much you actually get out of it. Hmm. Um, I do like literally I really do enjoy it because obviously around this time of year when you've got Star Wars coming up tomorrow and the mood like it kind of gets you in the mood yeah it gets you in the mood and i I literally really do enjoy it but it's just the fact that you don't get that much for what you pay for and the fact they're going to be adding stuff for dlc but you have to pay for the dlc is a bit of a bit of a joke to be honest i'd heard the first um map pack the uh, battle of jakku that ties in with force awakens that's free it is free but it's it's only like one well basically they do they give you four maps, but each map is... So you've got, like, Hoth. You've got a massive map of Hoth to start off with, which is basically like a walker assault. So you've got to uh, take on the walkers walking up to uh, the rebel base and taking out the rebel base. But, like, a, a battle just on Hoth is, like, a small area of it. Yeah. Um, so basically just cut it down. So it's exactly the same map, just cut down in a sense. So right. you've got given about well, four maps when the game first came out, but it's like one big map that's just been cut down to certain things in certain areas. So it feels a little bit like, oh, here you go, here's a game, but we're just mm. going to cut down what we think would be better for you from that sort of area. And it's just like, mm, I paid 50 quid for this game, and you give me four or well, five maps now, technically, with the Battle of Jakku and an extra map, t- uh, an extra game type. It just doesn't feel like there's enough for it, enough for the money that you've paid. Oh, okay. I, I kind of got, uh, yeah, I kind of got the feeling, it, I mean, we talked about this actually on the, no, I think about it on the last episode of my pod, um, that it was, it really does seem like it's, well, it's even made by Dice that it's just Battlefield but Star Wars. And uh, Battlefield, well, but three and four, actually, when they both first came out, there's not, it's a similar thing where you don't get you get a few game modes but you really only have maybe five or six maps until they start releasing expansions yeah. yeah and i think maybe a lot of people went into it not thinking right this is going to be battlefield star wars but thinking like okay this is going to be this big new separate star wars game where it looked, yeah. yeah but I uh, it's I, a shame really i think i had the problem of still thinking of pandemics like trailers that they put out for mm. battlefront beforehand and oh, seeing really those now, up, yeah yeah, and then seeing those and then seeing what they've produced. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy it, but it's just kind of not as much, not as not as good as I was expecting it to be. Yeah. Because obviously pan, what Pandemic had shown off. But I do, I love it to pieces, but it's just, I wish there was a little bit more there. Maybe one to come back to in a year when they've released a few things and maybe the price has dropped a little bit. Hopefully. <laughs> the, the thing that stopped me from getting it was, um, like you say, the 50 quid didn't, didn't seem like a lot for what you, it seemed a lot for not, you know, not getting too much yeah and um i mean it's still i think it's on sale on origin at the moment but like <clears> for <throat> what you get it's it's expensive yeah standard really edition is. is still 49.99 deluxe edition it's an extra fiver yeah really all you get is like hey you can unlock some stuff a little bit early <laughs> and if you want to get the version with the um like the season pass you're looking 94 95 quid yeah. yeah for a game with a season pass is ridiculous um, and they haven't so got think... any dates on when any of the stuff's coming out. That's the other thing. No, it's just they like just a don't... sort of vague, hey, we're going to put some stuff out at some point. Go ahead and give us another 45, 50 quid. <laughs> Before we actually decide when we're going to start doing it and what we're going to do. <laughs> yeah. Whereas go to something like Witcher 3, which again, put that on the list of games I bought on Steam didn't play or haven't played yet. <laughs> there, I'll get it. Don't worry. Calm down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that was a case of, I think I got it for... I think I got it in a pack with the other two games for 30 quid. And then the season pass was maybe 12 99 15 quid, something like that. Yeah. You know, for what's arguably a much bigger game than Battlefront. Yeah. Yes. And that's they gave kind of, out a lot of free DLC. Um, yes. Yeah. As well, I mean, which is quite nice. That's kind of the more sort of like, right, you feel like you're getting a good deal out of the pricing. Whereas like Battlefront is just, the, it's it, again, it's EA being like pretty shameless and like, yeah, just you, you're gonna buy it. Just give yeah. us all your money. Go on. Well, do it's it. got Star, Star Wars, Wars for the name, so yeah. you're gonna buy it. 
And well, yeah, it's just a license to print money, really. Yeah. Well, Upsetting as it may be, but yeah. <laughs> see, that's a reason why I've been really happy with Splatoon. Because I don't know Splatoon. What were they? In, it's, in light Splatoon of me. Splatoon <laughs> is um, the Wii U is a title on the Wii U. Right. Uh, and it's a third-person online shooter but instead of bullets and standard guns you are it's basically paintball okay and rather than killing each other or hurt or painting each other your goal is your team uh it's 4v4 and your team is the winner uh when you paint more of the map of your color than the other team that sounds pretty cool and then you got... shame it's on wii u i haven't got a wii u but yeah <laughs> you've got ranked matches where you have to control certain areas with your color and then you've got there's you have control these legendary weapons for, uh, that are on the map as well and and nintendo have been steadily kind of grip feeding um any uh, owners of splatoon you get like, like they'll give you an update and then there'll be two new maps or there'll mm. be new um customization options um that you could go into the sh online shops in the game and use the online currency uh use the game currency to buy it um and they like every month they'll release like two three new weapons that are free into the game and you can just go in and unlock them with the game currency and use them to your heart's content that's cool and they, so there, there's I, some decent support behind it and that. yeah i don't think for i don't think there is a single bit of paid dlc for splatoon and yet it's had um probably about a dozen weapons added probably about half a dozen maps added into it new modes yeah and it is and it's a thoroughly enjoyable game mm. the matchmaking on it for the online mode is so fast um, there's nothing worse than sitting there waiting for five minutes for a round to start no, that was yeah. the one thing about GTA that always got to me, was waiting for, playing GTA Online and waiting for a match to begin, and you're waiting for people to join your game, and it's just like, oh, come on. Mm. But Splatoon, you've got, I mean, a couple of minutes, and it will fill the list with people. It will log, get you into a lobby. It will pick, uh, it picks the map that you're going to play on itself and just throws you into the match. Yeah, um, that sounds pretty cool. And That's kind of what you want, really, for a multiplayer thing like that. Yeah, really. and disconnections, I mean, it's so smooth. I've never had... The only time I've ever had disconnections was because my internet was playing up. Yeah, Nothing so you can't really blame with... the game for that. <laughs> no, so for for a game that I've uh, I kept going back to, Splatoon is... I mean, Phil's got a Wii U, and I keep saying to him about getting his hands on Splatoon. Which I will do. You'll have some spare time in the new year. Why is that? Well, because you won't be so busy because Christmas and that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you're getting fired, Phil. That sounded a little bit ominous, ominous then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some news for you. Yes. Yeah. Phil, you're getting fired. Uh oh. And, get, and you're going to have your legs broken. But the good news is Splatoon. Yes, but on the, on the flip side of the coin, Splatoon. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> legs broken. <laughs> So this, uh, having sort of talked about this year, next year, what are we looking forward to, if anything? I'm really uh, pretty psyched about uh, XCOM 2. Oh, um, yes. yes. <laughs> I know they did it. I haven't played the console ports on that because that's always been like a PC game for me. But um, I, I played the original series way back in the day. Like it was one of the first games. We, we first got a PC in like 95, 96. And I played the um, original one, just uh, UFO. Yeah. Um, yeah. Played that to death, and then Terror from the Deep, and then the series went downhill for a bit after that. But the um, <clears throat> the one they, they released a couple of years ago, I, st I still play that. In fact, actually, I was trying out a new mod the other day for it. Oh, yeah? Um, but it's not really a new mod. It's kind of one well, new for me. Got uh, The Long War. Essentially, it tweaks a whole lot of stuff on it and makes the whole thing... Well, for one thing, it's in the title. It makes the game a lot longer. Mm. But it definitely seems like more of a kind of sort of steady progression against the aliens, because... In a basic game of it, you can end up being sort of within three or four missions, start facing the the harder stuff. Yeah. Whereas this one kind of it really sort of drags it out. Research and everything takes a lot longer. Um, but on the other hand, you're picking up money from every mission, and um, or you're you, there's more of an incentive to have your troopers kind of swap out rather than stick with one really great squad. Because mm. after each mission, they then have to have a certain amount of downtime, which is really great. Um, okay. Yeah, but anyway, XCOM 2, yeah, really, really excited about that. The uh, the trailers I've seen look both all look really good, and um, yeah, 
that's uh, that, that's my that's my choice. <laughs> yeah, I played a little bit of Enemy Within. That was a good expansion. I enjoyed I enjoyed that. That really um it kind of filled the game out for me a lot. The when it came out the orig the I say the original the <laughs> the newish one. Yeah. Um, and Enemy Unknown was um still really great, but um when Enemy were uh, sorry. <laughs> Can't even talk. Yeah. <laughs> Enemy Within came out. It sort of filled in a lot of the sort of extra stuff. It was like there seemed to be more of a point to doing missions sometimes, rather than just like okay, here's the next one because you were you know you're going getting meld for making mech troopers and things and stuff. So yeah, I, I enjoy. It. I'm, I'm not got a bad word to say about that series, yeah, other than it's very hard at times. <laughs> yeah, it is very hard at times. No, but it is X enjoyable. Com. Sorry, Phil. Hmm? I said sorry, Phil. Okay. Because I interrupted you. It's all right. Um, I I do love that that. Uh, I don't even know what I said now. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying because I was talking over you. Yeah, no. <laughs> we'll leave that for now. Oh, okay. Um, it, no, it's the case of what? What? Oh, sorry. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> yeah we'll stop. Stefan. Uh, <laughs> I'll just keep talking and hopefully, yeah. Uh, it's the I do like the whole sort of one wrong step and you're about to lose your whole squad though. That's it. Really yeah. does make you pay attention. It's good. You can't you can't play a casual game of XCOM. No, yeah. no, it makes it more interesting when when you uh, when someone finally dies and you're just like, oh, I just spent ages like working on you and getting you, you up get to level up to the rank of major or something, and they just like <laughs> you take one wrong turn around the thing, or they're not covered properly, and they get shot in the head and die. No, that's like, when, yeah, uh, that's when you go and reload your auto save. <laughs> oh no, is that not how you're supposed to do it? Uh, it's, it's frowned upon. No. Oh, it's very frowned upon. <laughs> Uh, XCOM 2 is on my list of uh, titles I'm looking forward to. Did enjoy Enemy Within and what little I played of Enemy... Uh, uh, no, Enemy Unknown and what little I played of Enemy Within. Yeah, some very good strategy in there. It's just, it's a great... Uh, the the turn-based thing is something that, you know, it's just a classic format, really. A lot of people... I mean, I'll be the first to say I'm not a big first-person shooter guy. I do play a few, you know, I still play Battlefield 4 occasionally. And yeah. That, and... Um, yeah, there's, you know, Elder Scrolls series and Fallout and stuff, obviously, a first person. But I was always, back in the day, like a strategy game thing, like, growing up and that. It was, actually, I kind of used it as an excuse to be able to play video games. So I'm like, yeah, but this one I have to think about. It's a thinking game. So like, <laughs> <laughs> it works, because you know, it, it wasn't like a, you know, get off the computer, you're just wasting your time. No, I'm not. I'm exercising my brain. <laughs> so I've, got, I've got to think out of the best way to uh, win this battle. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> This Can't game of Red it. Alert won't end itself. Um, <laughs> it would. <laughs> it, it definitely would if I left it, yeah. Um, <laughs> I am storm detected. Yeah. Well, that's that. I guess I'd better turn off the PC, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just the whole, uh, well, strategy just in general, I'm a big fan of. But that, like I say, played so much of the classic XCOM way back in the day that the, the, the turn-based strategy still holds up. Uh, it's uh, it, uh, I enjoy that genre. Nice. Phil? Definitely. Um, there's a couple that are on my list, really. Um, main one for me being No Man's Sky at the moment. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that, mainly because it's just so in-depth and there's a lot to it. Yes, but it, uh, ta it talks a big game. But... When you look at it as being like three people, I think it's three or four people designing a game like that, I'm kind of intrigued because I'm a massive indie sort of, like, indie developer sort of person. Mm. So, like, seeing what they can make in a studio that's apparently with a game that's apparently bigger than they can actually handle it would be quite interesting to see what they've actually come up with yeah it does uh it remains to be seen if um they'll be able to pull off everything that they promised but everything is looking good for it but i will reserve judgment on that one yeah i'll be interested to see how that turns out speaking of space games that can they deliver on what they promise I i've been watching the well and kind of making fun of the ongoing train wreck that is uh, star citizen for a while I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. Um, I know of it, but I'm not a big PC gamer. Yeah, um, it's well, it's it's essentially it's, enlighten us. Yeah, it's kind of um, sort of space flight sim thing and this combat and stuff, but it's all um, crowdfunded. It's it's being made by the guy who did the original uh, Wing Commander and mm. that. But that that's not really the the. The thing that's ridiculous about it the, the ridiculousness comes where you got people it's more from making fun of people who bought into it this early on with the amounts that they have there's people buying ten thousand dollar ships and that's real money um the, yeah exactly <laughs> um, for 
well, essentially at the moment is a glorified like 3D thing you can walk around your hangar in. It doesn't even really, you know, there's nothing really to do in the game so far and that. And they, they keep promising bigger and bigger things as stretch goals and just taking a lot of people's money. Um, it's it's a really, it's just, like I say, it's an ongoing train wreck of people who clearly are in too deep with how much money they've spent on it. So we're doubling down on, no, it's going to be the greatest game ever. Just <laughs> and that. more money into it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, I can't. Yeah, you know, I don't know all the all of the ins and outs of it, but it's just one of those things that I keep occasionally clicking onto like a thread about it on my forums and just feeling like, oh, this is still going. <laughs> um, <laughs> How I, I'd, re- I'd recommend you, yeah, looking up and just seeing some of the stuff. It's you know that people are paying for it is ridiculous. Uh, I think at the moment this it's like it's broken a record for like the most amount of the highest crowdfunded, um, the highest funded crowdfunded product. A project for video game and that. it's something like 50 60 million they've taken and there's no game really to show for it at the moment there's like a good sort of hangar module thing where you can walk around and look at the ships that you spent real money on and um <laughs> it's, uh, yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> it looks pretty don't get me wrong the, the the things that you can do the graphics look really great but yeah in terms yeah. of doing what the game's <laughs> meant to do it's a no. Yeah. It, it might just even. I mean, to be honest, it, it it might just be one of those cases where they're being in in certain ways very open with like, yeah, the game's not finished, but you can look at these bits of it and that. But in other ways, I I, I get the feeling they're being quite cagey with what actually it's a bit opaque as to what's going on at the studio and that and what they're working on at any time. But they're almost let people into bits of it too early. You know what I mean? Yeah. Rather than yeah. saying, hey, we're planning on doing this game in a couple of years' time, we'll crowdfund it and we'll give you guys a few updates here and there, but you know we'll let you know when it's more of a complete game they sort of just keep taking people's money <laughs> taking people's money and and it still seems to be a little bit too early in development <laughs> sort of thing but then this has still been going on for a couple of years but um uh, that's well, something they're I actually doing oh come sorry they, no they are they are definitely building it it's just it's um yeah it's just something to everyone's just putting of. their own money in for their kids when they finally want to play it when they get yeah you know <laughs> yeah when their kids get to now. 30, We're putting you this can play this now. game now. Children be able to fly around a fake spaceship. When I was a child, all this was just a hangar. <laughs> Remember when all of this was open pixels? Yeah. <laughs> as far as the eye could see, there was nothing beyond them. <laughs> can I have a go, son? No, Dad, go away. <laughs> God, but Dad. I paid ten. I paid ten grand for that ship. <laughs> well, it's mine now. I'm, yeah, I'm not even like exaggerating with the amount of amount that that costs. <laughs> Crazy. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to have a look into that because that's kind yeah, of funny. Yeah, I've Well, the dumb thing as well, as far as I can tell, that these are all ships that, some of them are ones that you can only get if you spend that amount of money. But most of the ships that people are, you know, still dropping like a hundred dollars, eighty-five dollars, something like that, are all ones that you can get with in-game money anyway when it comes out. They're just pre-order. <laughs> <laughs> They're just pre-ordering so that they get that ship from the beginning. It's, it's like. Yeah, Terrible. as I said, I'd, I'd recommend you look it up on your own time, but it's, uh, yeah. For a bit of a giggle. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, God. I'd have to send you some links or something. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, crowdfunding and games, we do have uh, Ukulele is supposed to be hitting uh, oh, yeah. next year, uh, around October time. I'm not familiar. It's from... Uh, the majority of the team that worked on previous N64 titles, like Banjo-Kazooie. Oh, right. Um, and it's a 3D platformer basically made by a team who back in the day made Banjo-Kazooie and some Nintendo 64 titles from Rare. That's really good. Banjo-Kazooie is nearly a perfect game. Yes. And so you've got a lot of these teams. They did a Kickstarter, which raised a whole truckload of cash, um, successfully funded, of course. Hmm. Um, and it's coming out next year, which I'm looking forward to my copy of that. I just thought of one while you said that. Um, another Kickstarter title that hit its budget, and I think it's coming out this year, well, this coming year, um, A Hat in Time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's coming out this year as well, actually. When you when you were talking about Banjo-Kazooie and the similar sort of thing, I'm just trying to see when it actually is coming out now. Well, it's a similar sort of platform, I think, again, and I'm a little bit behind yeah. on Kickstarter games. Yeah, this one's... Um, um, a Mac and Windows title, isn't it? Right. Yes. I'm just having a look, see when they put it down as release. It was the largest Kickstarter-funded indie 3D platformer, reaching almost a 1,000% of its original target. So Um, they've got a pretty good budget to work with. (laughs) They have, yeah. Just just a couple of quid here and there. (laughs) Throwing it around. 
Yeah. Well, whilst you're looking that up, Phil, as well, yeah. did you see that the Mystery Science, I don't know if you're a Mystery Science Theatre um, kind of a guy or if you've paid any attention, but that hit its stretch target as well, so we're getting 14 new episodes. Yeah. I did hear that, yeah. Um, I haven't, I'm going I'm to be uh, honest, I've never actually sat down and watched an episode of it. Oh, I do know all about it. Yeah, this is the. <laughs> I know all about it. I've just never actually sat down and watched it. But I, I knew about this Kickstarter because there's a couple of comedians I like that are involved in it. Obviously, Jonah Ray has been. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he's the new he's host. Part of it, yeah, and um, Patton Oswalt's part of it as well. And yeah, he's Felicia one of the new, he's, he's the son of son of TV's Frank. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's something that just it keeps showing up on my Twitter and stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And um, the, obviously the guys from the original I've seen on um, At Midnight and heard them on Notice and things. So it's just one of those things where it's, I kind of feel like, I can't believe I haven't actually watched it yet. But I know I know all about it, but I haven't watched it. Oh, it's <laughs> one of my favourite things. I mean, I got into it when I was 17 um, and just I've loved it ever since. And I, I put in a small pledge on the Kickstarter just to get me the T-shirt. But mm. then they were like, oh, well, if you go for that, I think that was the $50 pledge and you got a few other bits and pieces uh, as well as the T-shirt. And then they were like, oh, if you get the $100 pledge, you can get all of the new episodes, digital download in HD. Um, you'll get the T-shirt, you get all of the other bits and pieces and you can get your name in the credits. And I and before I'd known before I knew what I was doing, I'd already clicked and upped my pledge <laughs> to, <laughs> to that one. And That's then, how they get you with Kickstarter. Though. They yeah. go, okay, you, so um, you've chosen this level. Hey, why, why don't you why don't you choose the next level? Go on, you know, just yeah. Oh, <laughs> it makes sense, doesn't it? Come and, like, come and take this next level. Oh, oh. I'm a bit wary with Kickstarter sometimes, but um, I've never really had any problems with it. I've, I've I haven't really donated to any game things on it. Donate it. I've bought in whatever mm. the terminology is. Um, this is kind of yeah, they call it pledging. Pledging. There you go. The the main things I have done are actually kind of space technology things. Oh, okay. I do. Yeah, I did one that was a as a university. Uh, I think you didn't was, pay ten grand for a ship, did you? You've you've outed me. It's my secret. <laughs> <laughs> my secret shame. I go on to podcast. Ten thousand pounds. What mugs <laughs> they are. I go on to podcast, make fun of Star Citizen to make myself feel better about all the money that I spent on it. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, it, no, real life space. The the one I the, the first one I did was one for um, I think it's a, a team out of the University of Wisconsin maybe. Um, they're working on a new type of satellite thruster, which is quite cool. And I got like a neat little sort of patch to sew on to something, which I haven't put on anything yet, with a little certificate. And, that. and um, I did another one last year for uh, Light Sail, which is for the Planetary Society, which is again new type of satellite thing. Which I don't know. That's kind of what I'm into. Oh, that's cool. So. So that that's my main Kickstarter experiences. Oh, uh, other than that, a, a friend of mine was kickstarting a he's doing a Star Trek fan film. I was like, well, I want to help my mate out, so I I bought into the DVD level of his one. But that's kind of a bit of an in, not inside trading, but you know, it's sort of like, well, I want my mate to well, yeah, yeah. to be able to do his thing. So yeah. <laughs> no, the I I tend to do it if it's. I mean, I've got a couple of books like because um, they do the visual compendiums for like classic games consoles and stuff mm. so i've bought into those um ukulele and mst3k um i'm just into those unless i can get a physical thing for it then i don't feel i think if it was like yeah you can help make us build this bit on this rocket and then and we'll send you a so on patch and i'll be like no I'll, i want i want Your the rocket, rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, no, I mean, the, the, I, I, I'm not spending hundreds of dollars on it. I mean, these are the sort of the $30 levels and things yeah. like that. So it's, it's not, you know, it goes up from there right up to like normally like sort of $2,000 and you can be your get, be their guest at the launch mm. and, that and things like that, which is pretty cool. But um, yeah. <laughs> no, I think I only upped my pledge on Mystery Science Theatre because it meant they were just about to hit their stretch target for i think they were just about to hit it for their 12 episodes you're like this could be it i could be the one i'll push them over the edge yeah yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> I was like well i want to be able to see all of these new episodes and i thought yeah. well i may as well do that and i'll get my t-shirt and there's like postcards and stickers and things like that as well and then when they announced that they'd hit the target to get 14 new episodes i was like well well right i'm gonna get my money's worth that's I've fair just enough. Got to wait yeah. a year to get it. So. Yeah, it's always a little bit longer than you. You, you big at it and think, like, yeah, I'm going to get this cool thing, and then you forget about it, and then something like a post box 
you know, a package turns up like a year late, and you're like, what's this? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yeah. thing I paid for a year ago. <laughs> Hopefully they kind of drip feed us with the um, like the T-shirts and things like that, maybe. You never can tell, though, because sometimes they'll, they'll wait till they've got everything done and send it out all at once, or it's it just I guess it depends on who's doing it. Yeah, but no, I'm looking forward to that. Did you find out about a hat in time? No, for- no, they haven't got a release date. They say they're releasing soon on their website, but there's no actual release date. Sounds very fishy to me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> well, they've got the, the alpha builders out, but they haven't got like a, a release date from that, if that makes sense. Some of these games, though, they'll, they'll put alpha builds out and then just like with barely any fanfare, they'll just be like, hey, here's the beta. And um, and then, oh, hey, here's the final. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They've not long done that with um, Prison Architect. Yes. Uh, yeah. That kind of, that was in beta for a while. And then they, um, I think it was at EGX, actually, they... Uh, kind of turned around and were just like, right, well, we're in whatever you call it. We'll call this 1.0, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Main game now. So I did something similar. I bought in pretty early to Kerbal Space Program. Um, oh, okay. Which is uh, is a really great game, but like uh, the version when I started was like 0.18 or something like that. <laughs> um, so compared to the like the game now, they've done their 1.0 release and that, and it's is you know complete. Well, they're still adding stuff to it, so whatever but it's a complete game but back when i started it was they, they, they've you know it was it worked but there were so many buggy things and it was really just being you know so much of a modding community just being like right we're going to put this extra stuff in and a lot of that is now part of the basic game yeah but to the point where they they did their 1.0 release this year so i guess technically like account that as a game i played that came out this year but um <laughs> <laughs> that i that i played three years ago um but yeah no that 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 that's the way of i think doing it with some of these is to be quite open and just keep releasing alpha builds and just be like hey guys we know this isn't complete but check it out this is what it's like at the moment yeah as long as you can see progress yeah which is the opposite of that star citizen one because like i say they just release like an is a hangar module you can't do anything it's not a game whereas at least i say something like kerbal space program program it was 100 percent like looking at like yeah this is not a complete game but it's still a game you can still play it and stuff and yeah so uh, that's one i've I really enjoyed uh, Sunless Sea as well. I did a, I got early access on that. Oh, okay. That's that's quite a lot of fun. It's kind of like a top-down sort of um, I don't know what you call it. Kind of like an exploration thing where you're like uh, you're like a ship captain on uh, like an underground sea. London's kind of fallen down into like an underworld. Yeah. And stuff and uh, you kind of go from port to port and stuff and a little bit of sort of survival in it and that as well because there's kind of sea monsters and things and it's pretty cool. It's kind of almost um, a little bit sort of like. I don't know if you've read any of H.P. Uh, Lovecraft kind of Cthulhu type stuff and things like that. No. It's well, it, it's it's pretty cool. I'd recommend checking that out. Oh, okay. Sunless Sea, it's called. Sunless Sea. Yeah. Oh, cool. Right. So, so next year, Phil, anything else? Um, now just trying to think. My mind's just gone blank. So I'm still looking for a hat on time. Um, da, 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 da. Some battle the DLC. Is. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, um there's another game. Um Jonathan Blow, I don't know if you know him. Um he did a title that where he's gonna release like about last I think it's last year called The Witness. Apparently it's coming out this year, which is like a puzzle sort of shell uh, I can never say it properly. Shell s- cell shaded um title. Um but it's more puzzle uh, in first person, which I'm okay. actually really looking forward to. Um, I've been kind of looking forward to it for a little while. I think that's coming out this year. Oh, okay. Let's have a good look. Uh, Jonathan <laughs> Blow. Let's have a quick look. Jonathan Blow, The Witness. Uh, yeah, it should be coming out this year. So it's like an exploration sort of title. So it's you're like on a land um, and you're just exploring it, but there's like little puzzles along the way to do. And it's just, it looks really nice. It's, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I like my exploration games. Yeah, it's just, this, there's no one else around, but it's just like it's quite kind of peaceful, but it's, it's got that puzzle aspect to it. So um, I don't know if you ever played the unfinished one. It's, it's in my eyes, it's got that sort of similar sort of sense to it. Um, right, I haven't played those, but, but um, yeah, okay, yeah, but yeah, definitely worth checking that one out. So I, I saw a lot on it, and I was just like, I'm really excited for this. It sounds weird, but it's just it's one of those sort of games that I, I would enjoy when I'm playing it. Mm-hmm. Um, just trying to figure out what else is coming out next year now. Uh, you've got Street Fighter coming out next year, haven't you? Not the biggest Street Fighter fan out there. Mm, it looks good, but it's just the same old Street Fighter. There's only really so much you can do with the beat 'em up sort of style, really, isn't it? Yeah, they've, yeah. they've added in a couple of new elements Characters. to it, and yeah, they've done. I mean, that's the one interesting thing is 
they've really kind of gone all out with the new characters. They don't, because yeah. most of the time, if you look at even Street Fighter 4, you look at some of the new characters they introduced for that, it was just like, yeah, it's just kind of, it's it's the same character with a diff different skin and a slightly different moves. But with the newer characters they've introduced five, it actually looks like they've put in a bit of effort and you're not just getting somebody with a different colour scheme. Yeah, actually, I just thought of another one. Well, I say I thought of another one, I just looked online. Um, one... <laughs> <laughs> just, I just read about another one. You saw it online and thought, I want to get that. <laughs> Yeah, um, Unravel. Yes. Uh, yes. I really can't wait for that, to be honest, as well. Um, is that Ubisoft that making that? I can't remember now. Oh, no, I don't think it's Ubisoft. Oh, it's EA, shockingly. <laughs> well, um, that will be two levels, and then the rest will be DLC. <laughs> paid DLC. I don't know. It, I, Just you, know you know the type I'm talking about? The one where, like, you, you're, yeah, you're like a ball of string, of... in a sense. Yeah, and you're, you're just walking traveling string that gets caught up and unravels as you go through the level. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. It looks it's really kind of, nice. It does look really nice. Like, the their background looks fantastic, and I, they've obviously got the way where you can shoot out string to obviously help you travel across the world, like, cr travel across the land in case, like, instead of going in water. Yeah. yeah. And things like that. So that's another one that I'm going to add to the list of things I wouldn't mind getting hold of. Mm. Another, one, another one I will say is, if it ever does come out, is The Last Guardian. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, does come out. if it comes out this year, or if it comes out next year, or if it comes out the next year after that, or the year after that, <laughs> it might come out eventually. Sony aren't giving up with it. No, they're Have not going to, to, but... <laughs> is, I... it this, sorry to interrupt, is it this coming year that Final Fantasy VII Remake's coming out? Yeah. Am I wrong with that? Yeah, that is this uh, year. Yes, it yeah, is. No, it, no. But it's yeah. supposed to be episodic, isn't it, now? Oh, is it? Oh, apparently, apparently so. Oh, that's a shame. Although, that's so it. I don't know how that... Telltale deal right with episodic, but... um, <laughs> I, yeah. I've seen a couple of things that have made me laugh about it, where um, it's like, pay Square Enix £32,000, or no, um, $5, <laughs> and save, <laughs> save Ares and stop Sephiroth from killing her. <laughs> and it's just like, really? <laughs> really? Is this... <laughs> the worst thing is, I'm like, they probably would actually do that because so many people might want to save her. <laughs> that would be a cliffhanger. Oh god! On the on the original, I had um, it was there's this guy I was hanging around with at school when I was first playing with it. He was kind of an asshole, and um, he actually got expelled for beating up my brother. But the less said about that, the better. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he he came out with something. He's like, yeah, I know a way you can save Eris and that you have to do this special cheat code thing and that. He's like, bring over your memory card and we'll do it. And he just deleted my save game. Oh, what an asshole! Yeah, I wasn't happy. I was like, what have you done? He's like, oh no, it looks like it didn't work. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow, I, I've not even met that guy and I hate him already. Yeah, uh, it was, uh, I wasn't happy. My hair is standing on end like Goku right now, like, <laughs> wanting to beat this guy up for you. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm literally going Super Saiyan right here. No, don't do it, Phil. I, I, yeah, it was, uh, it was, I was not best pleased. No, well, you wouldn't be. <laughs> But like I was, I was naive enough to think, well, maybe he's got one of those like Game Shark type things. But it's like because I know I had something similar for my PS One, I think at one point. But I was like, maybe he got a different one that had he can apply Good a moment. code and it brings the character back. Yes. Like naively thinking, like yeah, it brings the character back and there'll be dialogue in the game for her to say. Like even if it did, <laughs> you know, I don't know what it was. Question mark, was, question mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Why are yeah, you still alive? I, I was just like, yeah, no, if he um. <laughs> be cool you know i want, want to get air not because i was like let's attach the character but it was more just like yeah cool because like i'd put in a lot of time on getting her to be my good healer i didn't care really about the story too much but it was just kind of like oh my my healer's dead you know <laughs> it's like oh, oh i can get it back cool oh wait no now i can't oh god damn it now i gotta start the game again <laughs> well they've just made um cloud available as a, a playable character in super smash brothers for wii u Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I um, they... almost um, purchased him earlier this evening. Um, oh, was it available now? Yeah, he, he was available right after last night's Nintendo Direct announcement. Okay, I'm going over to my Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Sorry, guys, see you later. Gotta go buy Cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing money at screen, what does it do? <laughs> <laughs> I loaded up earlier and had a look didn't buy it because i was like well, the amount of time i'm gonna get to play it i'll wait for a bit you but won the I, battle that most of us fail at some point <laughs> <laughs> i went to i 
thought, right, I'll play a quick online match, loaded up an online match, and already I w there was me against two clouds. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, yeah, I'm guessing he's quite popular, and I, I beat both of them. <laughs> it's probably because I don't know how to play as him yet, <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah, but you've not seen me play Smash Brothers, I'm crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have seen you play Smash Brothers, do you not remember last year, it was last year? Um, Flashback noise. At, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at EGX, when we played Super Smash Brothers. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, 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 alright. On the 3DS. Yeah, alright, you keep going. <laughs> and I won, <laughs> playing as <laughs> a character <laughs> I've never used before. <laughs> I, tried forget, I tried to forget all of that. I, I didn't. Therapy. <laughs> that laggy match that we played on our DS's whilst we were waiting oh, for God. Q for Evolve. <laughs> Bad memories. Actually, <laughs> speaking of Evolve, being quite disappointing in the end. Yeah. What has been this year's disappointments, gaming-wise? Oh, that's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> I've got it in my PS4 right now, if you really want to know. Oh, let me see if I can guess. Um... Oh, Battlefront. No. Huh? No. I thought... PS4's off, but if you uh, actually see what I've recently played, you'll be able to tell. Hmm... What is... Tricky. Oh, uh, <laughs> You're close to tricky. You're very close of Tricky. <laughs> you posted that picture. Oh, um... He messaged me that picture. It's not SSX, AJ. No. Are you thinking, um, Tony Hawk? <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the amount of times today that it's broke down, the game's just decided it's not going to work, and it's just, <laughs> like, had a black screen and said, there's been an error. Would you like to send an error report? I've just sent exactly the same error report every single freaking time, <laughs> which is error 404, Good game, not found. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this game is annoying me. And like, you'll do, you'll do a trick, and it'd be like black screen. What? <laughs> but I was winning for a minute there. Why are you just black screen me? And it'd be like, game crashed. Oh, how did it crash? I was just doing a kick flip. <laughs> Does game not know how to process a kick flip? <laughs> they did a pretty terrible PC port of um, a different. I guess like a kind of amalgamation version of like Tony Hawk, you know, the original ones, but um, to PC not that long ago, and it's it's buggy as all hell and everything. They just called it Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD, and like it's it's just oh, I played it for about an hour and I was like oh, I can't even handle this. It's not as good. Might as well, you might as well just get the old PlayStation One out and just original. I th to be honest, I think we've still got a PS2 in the garage. I have to go grab one and just be like, oh, they'll probably run on this. <laughs> this this will do. This will be better. <laughs> This this CD from PlayStation One is definitely better than this PS4 CD of <laughs> Tony Hawk's. <laughs> <laughs> Might not yeah. look as good, but I will tell you what, it runs a hell of a lot smoother and there's no crashes. <laughs> you can play it for longer than twenty minutes before it dies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for them to. Uh, I don't know how the error reports work on PS4, but I can't wait for them to go back and go. They go into a big bin labeled ignore. Yeah, probably do for Activision. <laughs> but if someone does actually have to go through them and they just see error 404, good game, not found, like five or six times in a row, <laughs> probably like... Just like, oh. this guy thinks he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, what? A... this guy's probably bought the game and now hates it. I didn't actually <laughs> buy it, I'm just renting it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've got none of my money. That's the main thing. I don't want to give out money for that sort of game. <laughs> So, as far as dis disappointments go, I'm not, I guess because I haven't really haven't really bought many this year that I've gone, oh, that's crap. But I guess maybe I'd, I'll just say Arkham Knight is my disappointment because I was very ready to buy it and then one heard, to, you know, it's not going to run very well and then yeah. couldn't buy it and find out for myself because they took it off sale. So I guess that's my disappointment of, like, I wanted to play Arkham Knight when I had the money to buy it and now I can buy it and don't have the money to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> want to play a good version of Arkham Knight. Yeah, and uh, I was stopped from doing that available. by various uh, various means, so that's my disappointment for the year. <laughs> they should refund you that, because you've obviously tried to buy it. <laughs> that's true, yeah, no, it, it's paid with good intentions. I really wanted to give them money, but they wouldn't take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> and in return, they, you know, they put out a crappy version of it. Yeah, I was actually quite disappointed with Mortal Kombat 10. I've only played it for a bit, that title, to be fair. It's... I don't know what it is about... I mean, it looks really nice, but I think they've where they've introduced the... You've got the three different fighting styles. Um, yeah. Or th three different kind of versions of your character, and it kind of... 
it's it's just a little bit too much, and the game has just lost its kind of charm. Yeah, I mean, you've still got the fatalities, you've still got the X-ray moves, um, all of the the basic Mortal Kombat um, things are there, but there's it's yeah, it's it's charm has it's kind of watered down a little bit, and as to whether or not it's just like oh, right, well, this game series has run its course, because I mean, I quite like the fact that they're introducing. Uh, in the new DLC pack, they're introducing um, Leatherface yeah. and the Xenomorph from Aliens um, and the the Triborg, where you've got the Sector and Cyrax kind of all in one. That's quite good, but, I mean, it's sat there half completed on, on the side, and I'm just like, mm, I really don't fancy, I just don't really want to go back to it, to be honest. Mm. And that's kind of annoyed me because I'm a big fan of Mortal. I love Mortal Kombat from the get go. Mortal Kombat Nine was amazing, but X, I just I don't know what it is about it that hmm. just didn't really uh, didn't really pan out. No. Yeah, that's a shame. Although, hang on, thinking about it, that might be a game from last year. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's. I oh no, think no, it this year. all of mine are in date order, so because I'm like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, no, that was the, that's kind of the one math. Uh, well, that and Super Mario Maker. You were you were well up for paying a lot of money for that game, weren't you? I know. Like and three hundred quid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> after game decided they were going to charge me for it five times. Thanks. Um, no, I did get my money back for that. It was just a little bit inconvenient. But I played the hell out of it for the first maybe two three weeks. Yeah. I've. It, I just I haven't picked it up again since. It's just like, nah. the, all the levels that I play, the custom levels that you go on there and people have created. There's no there's no real urge to finish to play and finish those levels because there's no story, there's no moving on to the next world, there's nothing, no progression like that. Yeah. But and there's n- I've got no urge to make a level because the levels that I play are so well made I don't think I can make anything that can be as good as that so it's a double edged sword on that one. yeah and I just I don't as much I love Super Mario I'm a big fan but I don't want to play any of the levels because there's nothing to urge me to get them to finish them and move and play another one because there's no level progression but then i also don't want to create because well there's so many better levels out there now that my level's just not going to be as good (laughs) (laughs) that always struck me as like one that was maybe a a bit more of a novelty like it's cool that you could go and make your own um super mario levels you know kind of officially but I, i could see it having of that, I could see that being one that I'd play it for. I play it for a few days or whatever, and then I'd go right. I'd try something else, and then I'd maybe pick it back up again a couple of months later and go, oh yeah, let's see if anybody's uploaded some new ones or whatever. Yeah. You know, rather than be one like right, okay, I'm going to go hardcore on Super Mario Maker for weeks at a time, sort of thing. Because like you say, there's no progression through to like right. I've got to get to the next level. You're just kind of playing each level. Mm. Yeah. So a bit not novelty, maybe not the right word. No, no, no. But, I think um, novelty is probably the exact word. Yeah. Because it's it's good, and for nostalgia, it's fantastic. You can take cast back through Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers Three, Super Mario World, and New Super Mario Brothers U. Yeah. And the music is faithful, and the the way it looks is completely faithful to the originals. But you've got none of the progression that the originals had to to, to urge you to move on. Yeah, there's no real impetus to be like, oh god, yeah, let's get to the end of this world. We'll move on to the next. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's what stops me from playing. I mean, they have um, it's like the hundred Mario mode, where you'll get a hundred lives and you play through um, levels that people have created. And when you get to the end of it, it unlocks like a new costume block that turns you into a different character and stuff Hmm. it's just like yeah but i don't care about that really that's more kind of playing into the sort of uh achievements um sensibility of like hey if you do 100 levels or you know if you you play this 100 times i'd be playing the arse out of it yeah because i'm such a whore when it comes to things like that (laughs) yeah like i've just oh so it almost needs that then yeah i've just bought final fantasy 7 for ps4 even though i i had i think i've got a copy on pc somewhere 
I've got the original PS1 copy. I've got it on my PS3, but got to get the PS4 copy. It's got trophies. Yeah, it's, it's got trophies. trophies. Oh, no, no, because PS3 it had it as PlayStation Classics, didn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm just like, ugh, it's got trophies. I don't need to buy it. Uh, oh, I've already, I've just bought it. <laughs> so I'm debating about getting it because it's got trophies. And I'm just like, no, no. I think no. the reason <laughs> when they released it on Steam, they put the achievements in on that. No, no, it. I didn't buy it on Steam. Mine, mine was. I'm actually in the process of rebuying all the Final Fantasies as they release them on Steam. I've currently got three, four, seven, eight, thirteen, shamefully thirteen, two, and Lightning Returns. But um, yeah, because they they just they, five and six are on there as well. I'm kind of this is the this is the thing on a bit six. of a completionist Final Fantasy thing, but um. I'm hoping they're going to release the uh, 10 and you know HD re- uh, HD remaster on PC because oh, yeah. um, I really played the original to death and like, obviously my PS3 died and yeah. <laughs> so I want to be able to play that. Again. So six, Phil, you were saying that there is that Final Fantasy six? Uh, yeah, Final Fantasy six is my well six, eight, and three are my favourites for Final Fantasy. I've played seven. I've played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten. Haven't played ten two. Played uh, not eleven, not twelve, thirteen, and then kind of gave up halfway through thirteen and was like no. I have also no. given up halfway through thirteen on multiple occasions, but I've stuck out and bought the sequels as an incentive to actually finish thirteen <clears throat> at some point. See, I... I finished thirteen, and I got <coughs> thirteen two and lightning returns, and I'm <clears throat> probably about a third of the way through thirteen two, but they're just. I just don't have the time. Yeah, they're not fair. pick up and play. No, they're they're quite heavy going. That's like it's the equivalent of like you can't just sit down and casually watch an episode of Breaking Bad, you know, in in the background. Yeah, it's a bit of a time. You you know, you can play it. You, know, you could well going back to Mario Maker, you can sit down and play a Mario level yeah. occasionally, but you can't really sit down and go. Well, you know what? I think I'll play. I think I'll play Final Fantasy for five Fine. minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's uh... <laughs> five minutes. Hour later. Yeah. <laughs> It's a bit of a time. All you've been doing is grinding against like a dinosaur in Final Fantasy VIII or something. <laughs> Gotta level up so I can kill this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Sorry to derail to Final Fantasy again, but no, 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 not at all. I've got. I think I've got all but one, two, three, and four of Final Fantasy, and yet I've only played seven, thirteen, and a bit of thirteen two. Well, the numbering's a bit odd because I'm not sure the ones I've got. I've got three and four on Steam. Yeah. But I don't know whether three is actually one because the numbering when they originally three released them is two, I believe. Yeah, I when they released them in America, two. like the original ones, it was sort of it was a bit it was something a bit fuzzy with that. I know from at least from sort of four, five, and six, that's the correct numbering. But like some of them didn't make it over to America from the original ones or something like that. But. They had the first one, which was where well, it started off as I believe Mythic Quest. So Final Fantasy one is actually Mythic Quest. But they right. rebranded it um, because they didn't get uh, they didn't get enough support. Apparently, okay. not many people wanted to publish it, so they changed the name to Final Fantasy, um, and then they managed to get enough people, like enough a studio, to actually support them to make it. They made that, and then they made two in Japan, which is I think three or four in um, the West, right. and three is something else. It's really it, it goes a bit weird. Um, it's a long time since I've actually looked into it. But mm. I used to remember which one was which, but now I can't, which is a bit of a pain. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. my favourite is still up there is six, I think. Not See, enough I've never actually played, played six. Oh. I've, I've never played it. And that's uh, <clears> one that, like, back in the day when I was first playing seven and eight, you'd go on, like, websites for, like, oh, I want to look up Final Fantasy stuff. I want to know more. I want to know, you know, I want to find a place to get the music and stuff. Yeah, and um, you know, there's a lot of people talking about six. I'm like, but six, but the first one that came out over here was seven. You know, being an idiot and <laughs> only having seen seven on PS1 and that. So, yeah. and there's a lot of people who seem to know a lot about six. And I was like, I didn't even see six come out, but you can get it for less than a tenner at the moment on Steam. It's well worth it. I would yeah. recommend it, but you need to make sure you have enough time. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the thing as well. I, it's it's one that's currently it's sitting on my wish list. Like I say, <laughs> it's like a, at some point I will fill in my final the gap in my Final Fantasy library, but I really yeah. don't have time at the moment to sit down and play another Final Fantasy. <laughs> to be honest, I've still got um, ten and ten two as HD for the PS4, and I've got Final Fantasy. I can't remember what it's called, but. I call it Final Fantasy Agito because that's what they call it in Japan. Type zero. Type zero. Um, I've still got that, which is 
really, I think, gone in my disc tray once. I mm. think I just the too. once. Yeah, you told me. I just haven't had the time. Is that the one <laughs> where it's kind of like a magic school or something? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I only know about that because I watch a D&D show and one or yeah. two of the people on it did voices on Type Zero, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Ah. That's a bit of a tangential connection, but I was like, that's, <laughs> I didn't even know about Type Zero. And they're like, uh, I think they're on one of the shows. And they're like, uh, anybody got any announcements this week? Yes, Final Fantasy Type Zero is out and we're doing voices in it. It's like, uh, uh, well, that's Type Zero? Cool. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew it was a Gito when it was like, they were announcing it in Japan. So I was like, oh my God, it's coming out on the PSP. Got to get a PSP. Never came over to the uh, to the West on PSP. Just came out to PS4. I was just like, oh, I bought a PSP for like no reason <laughs> apart from downloading Final Fantasy Seven, VII, Eight, Nine. <laughs> on the other hand, you can take Seven, Eight, and Nine to work with you. I guess. <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> I've got a long coach journey ahead of me. Better play Final Fantasy Seven for two hours. <laughs> I might get out of Midgar if I'm really good. <laughs> well, the version that's just come out on PS4 has apparently got some cheats built in that you can um, restore your team's. Oh, HP. yeah, I saw that. You just press R3 or something, apparently. Um, oh, I heard about that. Yeah, I'd frown upon that. It's cheating. Yeah. Well, obviously, it's My cheating. face has gone down as soon as, like, as soon as I saw anything about that. I was just like, no. Yeah, because what did you do it by accident? I know. That's... Yeah. Like it's not like okay, you had to pause it and put a code in. Literally, just if you lean on the stick a bit hard, you just you've just cheated. Yeah. Sure. I think if I did that, I would probably just go to a restart because oh, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be happy with myself. Hmm. I think. But then it depends on how the... far back it was. Yeah. Or when your last save point was. Yeah. There's yeah. some places where it's a long time between save points. You should that's have the option problem. to be able to switch on these things in the options settings. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean about pausing and putting in a code yeah. sort of thing, and you know. Or, like, having it as when you go into the pause menu, you, like, press pause and it goes, refill energy, refill health, refill mana, rather than actually Yeah, rather than being a one-button press... thing. Yeah. yeah. I know it's a button that probably doesn't get used that much in Final Fantasy, but at the same time, if it was accidentally pressed or you drop your controller because you had to go and answer the door or something silly, yeah. then I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it. just, it's just pushing in the stick. It's not... You don't not... have to, like, do two things at once or something. Yeah. But I don't know. I wonder how many people are going to use that. Probably a substantial amount. <laughs> All these people going, oh my god, the Final Fantasy trailer. I've never played Final Fantasy, but it looks amazing. Let's get, <laughs> let's get our hands on it. Yeah, I was wondering how many people jumped on the bandwagon with that. <laughs> that came oh. Out. Like, oh, yeah. <clears throat> or people yeah. who've heard, like, you know, if you're into games or into geeky stuff, you should probably have liked Final Fantasy VII at some point when you were 14 or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not accusing anyone of being fake nerds or anything, because that's, you know at the end of the day who cares but um yeah it's just one of those things where i was like really all these people like final fantasy like you i went to school with you never played final fantasy you know you <laughs> you you've never as far as i know own a console you know how do you you know <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you, if you did, goes, fair enough but like yeah <laughs> everyone goes crazy on that hype train they're like oh my god yeah I've never played this game but it looks so good now but how do you know how good it used to look because graphics <laughs> because time Time plus graphics equal <clears throat> better. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> we'll see if it's a uh, good episodic. I yes. don't know. Well, I mean, it's sort of. I mean, thinking about first when I first heard the episodic thing when you said about it earlier, I was like, oh god, episodic. How are they going to do that? But then thinking about it, it's not actually. I mean, it kind of does lend itself to that anyway because it's already three discs. Yeah. The original, which I guess you could just call that episodes one, two, and three. It's not a big deal now to transfer save data over, and it would just be like, hey, here's your party stats. It's not going to be too tricky. I mean, and it could even be subdivided, and each disc has got little points where it's like, yeah, you could probably call that the end of that bit. Yeah. I mean, it'd be annoying if it was just like the end of Midgar is the end of chapter one, but like, you know, you'd want to get a bit further than that. But there's definitely, I could see how it would work. It's not, some games definitely wouldn't work doing episodic, but I can see that working in Final Fantasy now I think about it. Yeah, it does. I mean, the new gameplay trailer that they've shown, it does look beautiful. Mm, yeah, I saw that. That looked really Although good. I couldn't, I wasn't overly keen on what they've done with Barrett's character model. So they kind of slimmed him down a bit, and it's just like, well, no, hang on, he's like massive guy. Yeah, my well, head is he... like a big kind of, yeah. Yeah. Is he massive guy, or is he just a ton of triangles? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a massive guy. <laughs> 
And all I, mean, all I looked, saw him as how did he triangle. look? In, how did he look in Advent Children? They had him kind of muscly then as well, didn't they? He's proper beefy in that. Yeah. I remember it's a long time since I've seen that. I have to give that a rewatch. It's been a while. Oh, yeah. Advent Children. Dig out the Blu-ray. Oh, I might watch it on Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife's going out, you see. So. Yeah, it's an excuse to excuse he to was, watch it. Lounge in front of the TV a... and eat jelly babies. <laughs> <laughs> He was a bit bulky, but he wasn't... I wouldn't yeah. say he was massive. Well, he was bulkier than in... In the trailer. Yes. They've, yeah. They've kind yeah, of in the game, he had, like... In the original, he had, like, a really big, kind of chunky body, really. Sort of... I mean, like you say, not... They didn't do him as, like, a fat, like, Kate Sith or, um, like, <laughs> Don Cornier character. But he, he was, you know, he was quite... Compared to Cloud, mm. he was definitely, yeah. definitely wide. <laughs> well... Noticeable. I think... <laughs> Noticeably F.A.T. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. I think yeah. we've uh, prattled on enough for uh, this episode. Thank you very much for uh, for coming on, AJ. Yeah, Any no pleasure. worries. Yeah, anytime. Um, uh, so it's Sup Dude. Yes, uh, you can find us, uh, well, I guess, I don't know what the easiest way. I mean, Facebook's pretty easy, really, isn't it? Uh, Facebook, I guess, facebook.com just slash Sup Dude Podcast. Mm-hmm. That will point you to it. And then obviously we've, we've got our um, hosting site and things, but I guess... Most people have got Facebook at this point. If not, Twitter, at Subdue Podcast. And are you on Twitter? I am. I've got my own one, uh, at AJHeretic666. Um, like I'm a 12-year-old who's just discovered metal. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. I set up my account when I was 15. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just got, it's one of those sort of online handles that sort of... It was like my first proper email address had that on. And I've just kind of stuck with it through, like, all of these <laughs> <laughs> sites and everything. Because I'm like, well, I'm sort of used to it at this point. Even if it is a bit cringeworthy and that. I've got a separate email for work stuff just to not have to give. Of course, that. but um, yeah, it's <laughs> so yeah it, at AJ Heretic six six six. If you want to hear me whine about my housemate and uh, <laughs> occasionally post Star Wars stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and you're all sorted for Christmas. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Not a big deal around here. I mean, we we haven't got any kids in the family. The youngest is my brother, and he's twenty four. So ah, that's not too. So uh, yeah. Not going to get woken up early by him wanting to get up and open his stocking. Uh, <laughs> I hope not, but um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he'll probably be back Christmas Eve later than I am. I think he's DJing at 60 million postcards that night. Oh, um, nice. Plug, plug. Yeah. Uh, not not an intentional plug. That's just... <laughs> yeah, if you, if you want to go laugh at my brother's DJing skills. or Nah, he's pretty good. Um, <laughs> and I'm down 60 million. So, uh, yeah. And uh, any New Year's resolutions? Uh, yeah, I've actually I've been real lazy this year at exercise, and it's something I'm meant to have been doing really because I've um, well, without going into details, I'm going to be losing weight, and I just haven't I've spent a lot of time sat on the sofa watching TV. But in my defence, there's a lot of good TV. There is. So uh, Too yeah, much good TV. <laughs> there is. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to get back out there, exercise wise. That's my resolution. We'll see how it pans out, but yeah, <laughs> we'll uh, check back in with you. See yeah. <laughs> Phil, yes. all sorted for Christmas? I think so, if I can find everything. <laughs> and news resolution? To go back to the gym, I believe, and play more games. They're the two. They're the two. To the gym? <clears throat> well, I'd love to, yeah. But unfortunately, they don't have that machine there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've, yeah, got, go you, you've got your PlayStation... Um, what do you call it? you got your um, PSP. I've got my Vita now. So, yeah, I can oh, take yeah. my Vita with me and, yeah... Two birds with one stone. See, if you get a PlayStation VR, they might make a virtual gym. Yeah, then you wouldn't even have to leave your chair. Exactly. Wow. You could, you could have that with your virtual hangar and your £10,000 spaceship. <laughs> oh, have I, got, have I got to spend £10,000? You don't have to, but, you know, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> they do cheaper spaceships, they're just not as good. Yeah, obviously. These are one-of-a-kind £10,000 spaceships. Yeah, put your name on the side. The SS Saucy Mrs. Trustbot. <laughs> That's your, that's your resolution for uh, 2016, is to get yourself a fancy, shiny collection of pixels. Yes. Yep. I've always wanted a fancy, shiny collection of pixels. Own my own hangar, virtual <laughs> hangar, and virtual <clears throat> £10,000 collection of pixels. Living the yeah. dream. Yes. It yeah, <laughs> is living the dream, that is. Come on. <laughs> well, folks, that is episode 15, drawing to a close. We hope you've all been good boys and girls, um, and Father Christmas is going to bring you some nice presents. I hope Star Wars Force Awakens does not turn out to be a massive disappointment. And... Otherwise, the next episode will be us just crying. 
<laughs> I think we're all hoping it's not a, a massive disappointment. From what I've heard, it's it's getting some fairly decent reviews and stuff. Yeah, so as long as it hasn't got one thing that I have seen online, which really does wind me up. Jar Jar all... Yeah. 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 Has he got a cameo in it? I'm hoping not. Yeah, I really hope not. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna if I uh, if I'm going on Sunday, I'm gonna go by myself because it's Sunday and no one else wants to go because we've already seen it. I think I'm going by myself Sunday. just to go and watch it. And if there's Jar Jar in it, I'm gonna be walking out. No, you won't. You <laughs> I probably won't. You... I literally, I'll just cut my wrists a little bit. No, no, <laughs> just a little bit. Like Jar Jar Binks fan, and you'll be just like. He's a like a Jar Jar Binks. Is there, no. one, there's, one, um, there's one thing you can do in response to Jar Jar Binks. Let's give it a good old episode three Darth Vader. No! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only thing you can do, isn't it? You have to stand up and do the pose and everything, you know. <laughs> Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. <laughs> From all of us here, folks, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. I've been Heist Definition. I've been Monkey Man Phil. Uh, I've been AJ. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know whether to give my online handle or whatever. Okay, bye. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we uh, hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, seasons, greetings, and all that. And um, we will see yes. you in. Yes! yes. Survival. <laughs> Survival mode. Survival. Um, <laughs> we will see you all in 2016. Thanks see? again, AJ. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, I have to, uh, to do a uh, collab on our podcast at some point. Sounds like a plan. Indeed. Take it easy, guys. Bye. See you later. Bye. Bye. of Geek Culture Radio. If you need a new podcast in your life, just visit geekcultureradio.com forward slash podcast.